Hello and welcome to Stolen From Me. This is your midweek episode and with every episode I cover, a viewer discretion is advised. This week's case involved two sisters, Bieber Henry and Nicole Smallman. 46-year-old Bieber Henry and her younger sister, 27-year-old Nicole Smallman, was incredibly close. They had completely different personalities, but they had a loving, caring relationship with each other. Bieber was headstrong, fiery and independent. She had the biggest personality as she entered the room. She knew exactly what she wanted and she got it. Bieber loved helping people, which led her to work as a social worker. Nicole and Bieber's mother, Mina, described Bieber as a spitfire and Nicole as a flower child. She said that Nicole was the complete opposite to her sister. Nicole was kind, calm and relaxed and lovely and she should have been born in the 60s. She said that she should have been a hippie and she loved photography, which is what she studied at uni and then she would become a freelance photographer. With lockdown, everyone was restricted to meeting up and they couldn't celebrate each other's birthdays. But when lockdown slowly eased, on Friday the 5th of June 2020, Bieber and Nicole arranged to meet up at Fryant Country Park in Wembley in London with a small group of friends. They wanted to meet up safely so they could eat, drink and enjoy each other's company. Bieber and Nicole set off to the shops They had bags and blankets and everything in their hands, ready for their lovely day ahead of them. They popped into the local co-op to buy food and drinks for the party. They were seen on CCTV laughing and joking with the people in the shop. This was around 7.30pm. They left the shop and headed to the park. They arrived around 7.40pm. Nicole and Bieber headed to the highest point in the park. As they began to set up everything for the party, they had some fairy lights for when the sun went down. Over the course of the evening, friends arrived for the party. They drank and ate and played cards and listened to music. They would capture the special day by taking numerous photos to look back on. As darkness began to fall on them, friends started to make their way home. By midnight, Nicole and Bieber were the only ones left. They didn't want to go home yet. They wasn't ready. They wanted to carry on celebrating. And they danced the night away in the dark, wrapped themselves up in fairy lights. By 1am, Nicole sent her boyfriend a text message saying that she was dancing in a field. This would be the last text message he ever received from Nicole. Bieber's phone was set to take a series of images using a clicker device. She recorded 150 images in sequence of them dancing and having fun together. By the final image that was captured around 1.15am, Bieber and Nicole were seen looking to their left as though they are distracted by something. It's believed a young boy who was just 18, named Daniel Hussein, was the person that distracted the sisters. Daniel Hussein was seen earlier in the night around 7.45, leaving his family home. He lives just minutes away from the actual park the girls were attending. He was wearing a mask with blue surgical gloves, which didn't look out of place because of the pandemic. He was also carrying a rucksack, and then he jumped on the number 204 bus and headed to Morrison's supermarket. He picked up an Amazon parcel, which contained a full balaclava face mask and two shovels in a pouch. He also purchased alcohol. He would then make his way to the park using a separate entrance to the girls. He would arrive there around 8.40. By this time, Nicole and Bieber had already arrived and her party was well underway. Hussein was sitting where he could see the party going on. Although there was no CCTV inside the park, it's believed that he sat in the park waiting for around four hours, watching the party and waiting for his moment to strike. Which brings us back to the last image taken on Bieber's phone. As Hussein approached the girls dancing, he caught Bieber completely at a surprise. He then stabbed her eight times. Nicole was stabbed 28 times in a vicious attack. She fell to the floor and he did not stop stabbing her. 
She had numerous cuts on her arms, legs and hands where she tried to fight him off. It's believed that the sisters tried to defend each other. After this cruel and brutal attack, Hussein then dragged Nicole and Bieber's body into a wooded area in attempts to hide the bodies. He then cleaned up the crime scene by putting rubbish in carrier bags and rubbish bags. He picked up everything from the party and tried to hide it in the wooded area. He then went to Bieber's phone and tried to look through it. He wasn't able to access the phone and then he decided to throw both the phones in the pond. Hussein was then seen on CCTV leaving the park around 4.07am. He was seen heading to his family home where he lived with his dad. He was seen on CCTV with no trousers on and he had a jacket wrapped around his waist. He also had some kind of top or cover wrapped around his hand. The police, however, never found his jacket or trousers. Nicole's boyfriend was worried she didn't come home by 5am. He knew something wasn't right as Nicole had a bearded dragon for a pet and she would never leave it unattended. She would always make sure someone was there to feed it. Nicole and her sister Bieber was reported to the police as missing, but the police did nothing. They didn't help at all. It was believed that a member of the public actually found one of the rubbish bags and placed it next to a bin in the park and the bin was then collected by rubbish men and taken away. And at around lunchtime on Sunday the 7th of June, friends and family went out looking for Bieber and Nicole. They discovered Bieber's glasses and then found a knife. They called up the police and asked for help and advice. And while on the phone, they were searching the area still. They discovered the bodies of Bieber and Nicole in the wooded area. Screaming down the phone at the police, it wasn't long before the police arrived and cordoned off the large area of park. Police launched a murder investigation, but because the size of the park and the area where the sisters was, it was going to be a huge challenge for the police. Meanwhile, Adam, Nicole's boyfriend, had called up Mina, the sister's mother. He said, Mina, I'm going to need you to sit down. We've found them, and they've gone. Mina recalls, I instantly fell to my knees and I began screaming and screaming and screaming. I sobbed for ages. I have no idea how long for I lost all concept of time. The police would search the area for around three weeks conducting a fingertip search. This led the police to find items in the area where the friends had found a knife. But due to heavy rain, the knife was clean on the top side facing up, but underneath it, where it was sitting on the grass, it was heavily blood-stained. Now the blood was Nicole's and also the killer's. Where Hussein had tidied up from the crime scene and collected all the rubbish from the party, there was blood found on a bottle left in the woodland. There was also blood on leaves and branches which was close to the sister's bodies. He had thrown away his blue latex gloves that he was wearing and they were heavily stained in one glove. Now it's believed that due to the cut marks in the gloves and the blood being inside the glove, that the person who committed this crime had cut their hand. The police put the DNA into the database, but there was no match. The police recovered the sisters' phones out of the pond, and the bag of rubbish what the binman had collected was recovered by officers. These bags were found to contain two blankets and some cushions, which was also seen on CCTV previous that the girls were actually carrying these to the party. These items were bloodstained. Officers searched about 120 tonnes of rubbish to find these. During this time, Hussein had taken himself off to hospital to get his hand looked at. He told his dad that he had been attacked, and he also told staff the same excuse. He said that he didn't want to report it to the police. The police ran the DNA through the National Crime Agencies, which attempts to identify relatives of suspects. And luckily for them, the police found a relative of Hussein's that came up. In the early hours of Wednesday the 1st of July, 
police went to Hussein's family home where he lived with his dad and he was arrested. As the police were putting the handcuffs on him, they saw the cuts on his hand. The following day, the DNA was confirmed to be a match for Daniel Hussein. He was charged with both accounts of murder. Now, the police were looking into who this boy was, his past and also the moments leading up to Nicole and Bieber's death. In March 2018, his school put him forward for a channel programme called Prevent. And by May 2018, he was discharged from the channel process with no outstanding concerns at the time with respect to violence, extremism or terrorism. According to Scotland Yard, he continued to receive support from his school, health and social services. No further concerns were raised about his behaviour in respect to prevent. And officers also said that they carried out reviews for six and 12 months after he was discharged from the channel. But on Wednesday the 3rd of June, just before the murders had taken place, Hussein was seen on CCTV in Asda's supermarket buying a set of five knives in a knife block. He produced his ID to provide his age and then he paid and left. He then returned to the supermarket later that day to buy Unibond power tape. It's described as an extra strong resilient tape. While the police was conducting searches on Hussein's bedroom, they discovered a handwritten letter signed which looked like in his own blood. He had made a contract with a demon. Hussein had pledged that he would perform a minimum of six sacrifices every six months. He would sacrifice six women. He would do this so he was able to win the Mega Million Super Jackpot Lottery and then he signed it in his own blood. A few days after the murders had taken place, he actually went out and spent £162 on lottery tickets. To this day, the police have been unable to get full access of his browser history. They seized his laptop and his iPad from his bedroom, but they haven't been able to gain access to all of the information they actually need. Now, it is said that the police police officer, DCI Simon Harding, is working on the investigation. And he said that he felt like his hands were tied because he had asked the US Department of Justice to help out. I think the, the website that he was working with was a US website. But they actually turned him down and said they wouldn't help him. The site that... Hussein actually went on to make this pack with the demon was is still up and running but I'm not actually going to put any information about that site because why would I? When Hussein was arrested on the 1st of July his response to the police was yeah okay and this was my address and basically he was very blasé about everything. The police would ask him how he got his injuries to his hands and if he had any other injury done on him. And he said that he was robbed and he kept up that story like he did when he went to the hospital. And he also stated that he had autism and he had memory loss. He advised the officers that he was willing and ready to be interviewed. And during the process, he actually gave no comment in response to all of his questions that was put to him. And since that day, despite the overwhelming evidence that they had against him, he, was all, he has always denied any involvement in the murders of Bieber and Nicole. And throughout his trial, he continued the same thing. Now, at his trial in court on the 9th of June 2021 at the Old Bailey, Hussein showed no remorse throughout the procedure. He consistently denied that he was the person in the CCTV images in the park, in Asda, buying the weapons, everywhere where he was seen on CCTV, he flat out denied it. He said that wasn't him at all. Then on the 6th of July 2021, a 19-year-old Daniel Hussein was found guilty by a unanimous jury following a four-week trial at the Old Bailey for the murders of 46-year-old Bieber and 27-year-old Nicole and also having the possession of an offensive weapon. He will be sentenced by the court 
on September the 22nd, which I will do an update for. Mina, Nicole and Bieber's mother, publicly spoke out. She said that she was the first black female archdeacon of the Church of England and losing both of her daughters was enough to shake her personal faith. But fortunately, she did not. She said to think of her daughters dragged across the grass and their clothes pulled up and their bodies placed in a macabre position. She said the person who committed this didn't have a heart and they couldn't be human. She goes on to say if anything could come out of this which is good, then it is that four other women who was lined up to be murdered in this pack for the demon to give him the lottery, that these women were saved. Mina then spoke publicly saying that the police did not want to help in the beginning part of the missing persons investigation. She believes that because her daughters were a person of colour, that the police wasn't interested. Now, they had to go find them when the bodies were found, so they had to get involved. But she believes that the reason why the police refused to help at the beginning is because they were a person of colour. It also come to light that while her two daughters were laying there in this overgrown woodland, Two police officers allegedly had taken inappropriate photographs of the sisters' deceased bodies, which included allegedly taking selfies with the deceased bodies. And they shared them allegedly on WhatsApp group, which is a free messaging app. Now, the two police officers involved have been charged with misconduct in a public office through taking these photographs and sharing them through WhatsApp, allegedly I think they shared them with like friends and colleagues, allegedly. Now, the officers have been suspended from duty and they have a hearing coming up. So as soon as that hearing has happened or I can find out anything, I will let you all know. She did state that after this had happened, the police were really good and they helped her through the rest of the investigation right up to when they went to court. They were really good. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that because I feel like it's really important. Thank you all so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you're all well and safe. Much love and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.